Yeah, but first, you know, pull out that fan, get a spot at the pool, because we're talking about a heat yeah. wave, man. How hot's it going to get? Save that good lawn chair. Make sure you put something out there tonight so that nobody takes it for tomorrow. Uh, yeah, this is the kind of weather where the road buckles, too. <laughs> the pavement can buckle in uh, that heat. We got some thunderstorms to the south this morning. Uh, flood warnings there because the rain has been falling over the same spot. Several inches of rain around the Rochester areas, but sunshine here, 68, already muggy. We're heading to the upper 80s, but it does get hotter heading into the weekend. And uh, Kaya has some tips on how to beat the heat and stay safe this morning. Yes, yeah, Ben, tell your grandparents, tell your neighbors, because knowing the warning signs could save your life. So let's start with heat exhaustion. Here are the symptoms. Faint, dizzy, excessive sweating, cool, pale, clammy skin, nausea, weak pulse, and muscle cramps. But heat exhaustion can quickly progress into heat stroke, and that's when it can become deadly. So you're looking at throbbing headache, no sweating this time, red, hot, or dry skin, Body temperature is going to be 103 degrees or higher, rapid strong pulse, and you might lose consciousness. So here's what you can do. Get to a cool air conditioned place, drink water, take a cold shower, call 911 or have someone call 911. Bottom line, keep cool. And Hennepin Healthcare says to get medical care as quickly as possible. And this is what happens when they do treat you for heat stroke. The way we treat them is we cool them down as rapidly as possible with um, water, ice packs, fans, and then supportive critical care because those patients are critically ill at that point. And an important reminder not to leave your kids or pets in the car when temperatures are high. Even five or ten minutes could be deadly. Good reminders, Kaya. And remember, you can keep an eye on the extreme heat or any changing weather by downloading the CARE 11 app. There you'll find the latest forecasts, live radar, and severe weather alerts. And a look at the roads, 610 at Highway 47. A little bit of fog out there north of the Twin Cities Metro this morning. No crashes to report, but there are weekend closures. I'm going to explain what they are coming up. Here's your local morning rush. It's a story that got so many people talking and it appears the St. Louis Park City Council is listening. A day after announcing they would no longer say the Pledge of Allegiance at public meetings, the council now says it will revisit that decision. After receiving many comments from the community, a city spokesperson says the council will talk about it on July 8th. Wednesday, the council voted to drop the pledge over concerns that it wasn't reflective of diverse values. More than six decades after his death, an airman from Arlington, Minnesota will finally be laid to rest this weekend. Vern Boudin died in a cargo plane crash in 1952, but his body wasn't recovered until recently. We were there when he received a hero's welcome home. It's awesome, it's emotional, and one more step and he'll be home. There's no words to describe it. Boudin will be buried at a special funeral service tomorrow at 2 p.m. at Arlington Public Cemetery. Night two of the big debate series, where they just circle around each other or go in for the kill. It was a little bit of both. And she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me. Kamala Harris took on Joe Biden for working with segregationist lawmakers on bills that would make it harder for busing. In the end, it was Harris and South Bend Mayor Pete Buttigieg who stood out the most in this crowd. Whether that translates to higher polling numbers remains to be seen. A happy update to share with you this morning. We've learned a Maplewood cat who survived a 45 minute washing machine cycle is back home. Felix has been recovering in the hospital since the June 19th accident. A GoFundMe to help pay for Felix's medical bills has now reached more than $15,000. And that's your Friday Morning Rush. Chris, thank you. Well, do you use an insulin pump or know someone who does? You may want to listen to this. Medtronic is sending out alerts to some insulin pump users saying there's a possibility the devices could be hacked. This is one of our top trending stories and in our digital dive I'm breaking down what you need to know if you have one. Now the alert explains that some of their insulin pumps from 2012 or earlier use wireless radio frequencies that could potentially be used to hack the devices and control the amount of insulin delivered. 4,000 people could be impacted by this and like me you're probably wondering well why would anyone want to hack your insulin pump? Who knows there's crazy people out there but the good thing is this hasn't happened yet. Medtronic recommends though that their patients consider changing to a newer model in some pump with better security. And of course we had hundreds of you guys talking about this story online. Joni had a long response, but I'll read part of it. She said, let's not pretend this is anything other than what it is, a money grab by them. 
They knew about this way back in 2011, yet issued a statement then that they weren't recalling them due to it being such a low risk. And Jessela says, as a mom of a kiddo with type 1, the people hacking the pumps are people doing DIY closed loop systems. They're threatened by the potential loss of revenue from their newer expensive pump that does what people are hacking the older pumps to do at a much lower cost. And I think Jessela hit the nail on the head here, guys. After going through all of your comments, many insulin pump users were talking about how they loop their pump, but I had to do some digging about what looping actually was. Basically, insulin pump users are hacking their old pumps and using an app to automate insulin delivery oh. themselves. So. You can comment on the story. You can read about it more on our website, carolevin.com. But I think a lot of the, they've kind of created their own with the old one, and it's working. Yeah. And who knows? Smart though. people yeah. if they got that loop going. Right. Huh? That's incredible. I mean, people, this is so expensive. People are going to do what they need to do for to sure. save the money. And I don't blame them for being a little skeptical. And we know the cost of insulin. Yeah. Sky high. Yeah, expensive. Absolutely. Let's go to spend now for a one thing weather. Yeah, we're looking at sunshine here this morning and uh, more of that sun through the day. It's going to get pretty warm, upper 80s, not quite 90 today, but some thunderstorms rumbling to the south where uh, some heavy rain has fallen around the Rochester area. We're heading to the upper 80s here today. We'll feel like 90, but it's only going to get hotter. We're talking heat indices over 100 for many of us tomorrow. With the 2020 race already heating up, there's one opponent all the candidates have in common trolls hoping to take them down using the internet's latest high-tech scam. They're called deep fakes. Let's connect the dots. A deep fake is a video that can look very real, real enough to fool you and your computer. Using artificial intelligence, scammers can generate and test fake videos until the machine can't detect the forgery. These fakes first began showing up online in the form of pornography when users began swapping celebrity faces into videos and spreading them online. And celebs and politicians are the easiest targets. Why? The more video of a subject that exists, the better the deep fake that can be created by the computers. Fast forward to the 2020 race, not being able to tell the difference between a real video and an altered one makes the fight against fake news a lot harder. That's why a professor at Dartmouth College is developing software to spot deep fakes, and the military is even throwing money at researchers to find better ways to authenticate video. Until they do, remember, seeing isn't always believing. You know, this is fascinating. You can see how this would impact the election when you think about all the fake news out mm -hmm. there in 2016 and now to add video. Yeah, and like they said, some of those are hard to tell. They look so authentic. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, they are paid to uncover the worst of the worst so it doesn't pop up on your social media pages. Coming up, why the job is haunting employees long after they log off. Then in 20 minutes, it's medicine they need to live but can't afford, where one group here in the Twin Cities is going this morning to find an alternative. All right, we've done axe throwing. Now we're going to do the cross cut celebrating National Paul Bunyan Day coming up.